Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and welcome to another New Toy Tuesdays, an occasional slot where I show off something shiny that has come my way. Items I show here are new to me, if not to the market, and may either be something I've purchased directly or be supplied to me by a manufacturer or wholesaler for trial or review. Beware, however, reviews are honest, and I will point out any flaws as I see them. Today I'm going to show you what is perhaps the last word in voltage testing, the TIS. 859. But first, back to basics, and in an older video where I sported a much more sensible hairstyle, I talked about safe isolation and the various voltage testers I had at my disposal at the time. Here's a popular one you see a lot of out in the field, the Martindale VI3700-2. It sports these rather natty spring-loaded tips, uh, which can be locked open to expose the metalwork. Uh, and as a voltage indicator, it does what it says on the tin. If I stick it onto my proving unit here, we can see that it gives a very basic visual indication of the result, along with an AC, DC and polarity indication. So the strength of this thing is its simplicity. It has one job to do, and it does it very well. The weakness of this thing is its simplicity. It takes up a big chunk of your toolbox for its one single function, and that space may arguably be better occupied by a multifunction device that can do other useful things, such as continuity and resistance testing. It's for this reason I carry around the TIS845, which I bought in January of 2017. So a quick recap on the advantages this offers over the Martindale. Obviously it also has voltage indication with AC, DC and polarity. Let's just stick it on the prove it unit there so we can see it in action. Uh, obviously as you can hear it uh, also gives you audible feedback and there is an LCD display reading out the voltage there. Uh, it uh, also has a basic LED torch. Uh, it can do continuity with audible and visual indication. It's also an ohmmeter, capable of reading up to 1,999 ohms. Uh, and uh, it has uh, LEDs for phase rotation. It's also got a self-test actually. If I put these together and press this button here, it'll give me an audible and lamp test to prove that it's fully operational. A horrible noise that is. Okay, uh, so that, that will prove that all the LCD and LED segments are, are proven to be working. So that's a, a lot of extra kit and caboodle for a similar amount of space sucked up in the toolbox. It's hard to see how the new 859 model can improve on this, but there are a few minor disadvantages to this older model. Firstly, unlike the Martindale, it does need batteries, two treble A's in fact. I'm going to remove them so we can see how well it works, should they be missing or if they run flat. Okay, with the batteries removed, if we pop this onto the proving unit now, we'll probably find we get not a lot. We do get a red caution light to indicate a voltage is present, but nothing to tell us the magnitude of that voltage. Without working batteries, it gives us less information than the Martindale. Needless to say, without the batteries, the continuity, resistance and torch options are, well, not an option, but all that's okay. It's not like AAA batteries are hard to come by and this thing doesn't chew through them. I'm still on my original set from over two years ago. The Achilles heel of the 845, if it has one, is perhaps the probe ends. Uh, like the probes on my multifunction testers, guidance document GS38 means the probe tips are barely exposed to the point where they're friggin' unusable in many everyday situations, in fact, which means most of the time I have to remove their covers, which are then swiftly lost somewhere on site, requiring replacements to be procured. To save the aggro, I tend to use my tester with the covers removed most of the time. It's just easier to keep them in the box rather than having to be up a ladder and finding they're getting in the way and need to be safely stowed. I have a habit of losing these pesky things and I'm sure I'm not alone. Enough about the old guard though, what does the 859 do that's different? Well, it's a, uh, a little bit chunkier for a start, but uh, check out these probe tips. Uh, retractable shrouds, no less. Nothing to remove and lose here. This thing has a permanent semion for GS38. We also have a choice of probe ends. These chunky ones uh, are perhaps all very well if you tend to work in more industrial applications, but for me you need to poke into dinky domestic holes such as small screw connectors. This is one fat boy without the slim. However, we can reduce our girth by unscrewing the larger tip to expose something more that I would find practical, something more svelte, shall we say. Let's have them off. 
that's more like it. Um, in fact, both the flying lead and the pokey probe are also fully replaceable. The flying lead can be unplugged from the rear here and the probe tip here can be removed. Uh, so that's rather handy and had that been the case with my original dialogue tester which I have over here and whose flying lead simply dropped off one day well uh, I might never have needed to fork out for a replacement if uh, if this had been uh, made with replaceable probes so uh, we've hopefully we've got some longevity built into this because the um, the probes if damaged uh, can be replaced uh, anyway, let's see what it does when applied to a voltage, shall we? Let's get the proving unit over again. Jam it in there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, again, we get an LED visual indication of the voltage, along with AC, DC and polarity. Uh, after a few seconds, the larger LCD display kicks in with a voltage reading and an AC or DC indication. Uh, we have a, a backlight on the uh, LCD as well, and a torch again that I can turn on there. It's quite hard to do this with this camera in the way, but there we go. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we also have uh, continuity still as you would expect so if I touch my two probes together I get a audible and a visual indication of continuity uh, and again we have resistance with an increased range this time up from the um, 1999 ohm range of the previous tester to uh, I think it's a whole mega ohm um, on this thing now where it's auto ranging of course but uh, that's a, a bit more of an impressive range and again you've got that, that bigger LCD display to uh, to see by which is nice so so far it's operationally similar I guess uh, apart from the increased resistance range it all works much the same so uh, let's focus on what's new for this I'm going to use my simulation setup here we've seen this in previous videos but uh, just to fend off repeat comments this is not supposed to represent an ideal installation it's for when we have a work experience kid or for demonstration purposes in these videos in real life you wouldn't hang this many breakers off a single RCD there would be a cover across the buzz bar you wouldn't cable tie your cables together within the board just let it go you pedants I mean take this see this this is a meter i used to have an old central heating controller here with the tails just looped through the back of the thing and it was pretending to be a meter but i got so much stick from people asking why my tails were passing through a friggin central heating controller i had to go out and spend the equivalent of about 20 cans of kangaroo piss on an actual meter from tlc direct although i'm rather pleased with the old school look of this thing but uh, anyway if we could dispense with the complaints and stick to the point that point being how this behaves and what we can do with it We've already seen this on the DC proving unit, but uh, it acts slightly differently when exposed to AC. If I put it on here, you'll see the, uh, the LEDs light up, as you expect. And after a few seconds, the LCD kicks in and... Uh, can you hear that? Yes, it's vibrating. <laughs> That's a bit weird. Uh, it might actually give you a bit of a bit of a fright if you're not expecting it. So, so that vibration seems to be instead of the audible tone like the 845 gives out. But let's put the 845 back on there just to remind ourselves of what that... Uh, looked and sounded like there we go we stick this thing back on here we get an immediate led indication and uh, and after a few seconds that, that vibration starts um interesting that isn't it i, I guess that in a a noisy or busy environment the vibration might be better than an audible feedback if you're working alongside someone else and you're both armed with the same instrument and uh, it's it's more personalized feedback uh, and is less easily missed or confused you know, it also has this uh, rcd function which i've not seen on this kind of instrument before um, in order to demonstrate that i guess i'm gonna have to do it on the rcd side of the board there which means i've got to enliven that uncovered buzz bar now where uh, again before you get busy in the comments i know i'm violating my own safe isolation procedure here but hopefully you can trust me to demonstrate this thing without any kind of ridiculous let that be a lesson to us all violating safe isolation procedure is not big hard or clever and there's no excuse for it Right, let's just make that a little bit safer, shall we? Even though there's a bit of blank missing out the front. I shall have to demonstrate this RCD function 
in a slightly different way. Okay, um, right, where's all my gear? Oh, drop that there, okay. What I'm going to do then, uh, I'm going to use my QTEC R2 unit to uh, do that to a slightly safer fashion. So the RCD is on, we've got power going off to here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, uh, what I was going to do is I was going to put uh, live to earth uh, using this device. Obviously I'm going to do that now via the, uh, the R2 unit and the, the nice GS38 Pro event. So if I plug that into there, we should get uh, voltage indication and it's vibrating away. And if I press the RCD button, we should see the RCD trip. Jolly good. Okay. So what does that tell us? Well, uh, the uh, test function there is not configurable. There's no uh, trip time displayed. The parameters can't be altered. It's just a 30 milliamp injection to prove mechanical operation of an RCD installed for additional protection. I'm honestly not too sure where I would use that feature, to be fair. If I wanted to intentionally trip an RCD, it's usually because I want to get a time result from it. But um, nevertheless, it's here. Moving on to another feature, we have electric field detection, which is a, a non-contact detection. There's a, uh, a sensor uh, built into the top right of the unit here. And if I um, turn the backlight on, if I hold down the EF button, you can see it comes up with the EF on the display. And as I move it towards my consumer units here, it should start picking up the magnetic fields. And as I get closer, the, uh, the rate of the tone increases until it becomes continuous. And as I move away, both the, the tone starts decreasing in rate, but also you've got this up to four bars on the display here to indicate how close you are to a power source. So uh, that's quite interesting, isn't it? I can also use this EF function to detect live parts. So uh, one problem with the safe isolation procedure using a contact tester like this is that you need a working neutral or earth to connect this across in order to detect a live part. Let's pretend I have no earth here and I've just got a line in neutral, but the neutral is broken or failed. If I place this contact tester across line and failed neutral, obviously I get no reading because the circuit is incomplete. Uh, I then put that on a uh, onto a proving unit, see that it works, and I think, okay, jolly good, marvellous, I've proved safe isolation, but this obviously is still live and waiting to bite us on the arse. Uh, and that's a bit of a problem, of course. Now with the 845, um, I can place one probe onto a live part without the other one connected to anything and it will still give me an audible tone and a caution light to indicate that something is live there. The uh, 859, if I use the EF function, I switch to EF and I can again do a one probe test. And as I place that probe on the part you can hear that we get a continuous tone and four bars on the display warning me that yes that's live you probably want to be a little careful there proceed with caution we have one other function on here that my tis 845 lacks and that is capacitance not a function that uh, i've needed a lot of in my mainly domestic shenanigans i must admit and it's usually checking a failed motor capacitor that i need such a function for in a previous video i talked about my klein clamp meter which has a capacitance function but there's one on here too so let's just compare the two shall we i've got here a uh, what, what is purporting to be a 1000 microfarad capacitor and if i shove it into there Hopefully it's making contact and then press the button and uh, you can see it comes up pretty much straight away with a reading and um, we're getting about 1500 microfarads something like that so this, this old capacitor is well out of tolerance by the looks of it uh, but it's uh, it's quite quick to come back with the display now if I put it on the Klein just get it the right way around the, the Klein is a mighty fine instrument, but it is rather ball achingly slow on capacitance, as we shall see. Let's turn on the backlight. So the capacitor is connected, and off it goes, thinking about the value of it. Okie dokie. And it's still thinking. And there we go, we've got the same sort of number again, 1500, so it's, it's a lot slower, the Klein. 
But, uh, you know, I suspect capacitance measurement isn't something most of us are having to do a lot of in their working day. And those that do will probably arm themselves with something more robust for that task anyway. Still, it's uh, nice to have that function here. We saw earlier that the, uh, the Model 845 was pretty much damn near useless without its batteries. All it would do is show us a, a cautionary light to indicate that there was a voltage present. So um, what's the difference with this one then? What does this do without its, uh, without its batteries? That's the next thing to look at. We also saw that the Martindale, which doesn't need any batteries, still provides a lot of useful information um, when exposed to a voltage. I can have trouble getting the, the back of this. I haven't unscrewed it enough. So let's just pull out the treble A's here. Obviously, we're going to lose most of our functions. Any, any of the, um, the clever functions, the RCD, the electromagnetic field test, the capacitance, resistance, uh, backlighting, torch, without the batteries, they're all gone. But what do we have left? Well, let's stick it on the proving unit. Awkward again. And you can see that unlike the 845, we still get a lot of meaningful information regarding the voltage that we're looking at, the voltage, the polarity, uh, it's all being displayed for us there. Obviously the vibration function isn't working, but uh, we don't really expect it to be there because uh, again, the batteries are out. So even if the batteries are flat or missing, uh, we still have a very capable working voltage indicator. So uh, that's rather whiz balls right there, is it not? Speaking of batteries, I've just refitted them and uh, I've got here a failing AA battery. Let's stick it onto the, uh, the 845 and see, uh, see what voltage we get out of this, if we want to know whether this battery is uh, hot or not. And we're getting absolutely nothing at all. Okay, well, let's try it now on the 859 and see what reading that gives us, shall we? One point one volts. So there you go. Uh, another advantage that the eight five nine has over its predecessor there is that it had a lower uh, voltage detection threshold and can record um, a, a number that uh, previous voltage testers may not have been able to see. So there you go. Uh, it's IP sixty five, which is one up from the IP sixty four rating of the eight four five model, uh, and it's um, rather higher than the IP fifty four of the Martindale. So it should be robust enough for any Sparkers toolbox. It comes with a soft case. I never use soft cases, but it is there. There's a, uh, a whole lot of wholesalers stocking TIS kit now. I know CEF and SRM have their products off the shelf locally and can order in anything they don't have in ready stock. What do you think? Like what you see? That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I shall catch you next time.